All right, morning, Debbie. We're in John chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 6. We've said some of these things, so we'll skip them because we've talked in depth about a lot of it. Some of them we'll spend some time on. So John chapter 6, or John chapter 1, verse 6. I'm going to be in Jeremiah like I was last week. It's supposed to be in Isaiah again. It worked, but it wasn't what I was supposed to be saying. So we're going to read it and see. This is uh, John's account of John the Baptist and his witness. Verse 6, I got amplified, so I may have some words and you won't. We'll just have to see if that confuses you or not. There came a man commissioned and sent from God whose name was John. This man came as a witness to testify about the light so that all m might believe in Christ the light through him. We've talked about the light. We're going to spend maybe a little on that later, but not right now. John was not the light, but came to testify about the light. There it was, the true light. The genuine, perfect, steadfast light, that was amplified, which coming into the world enlightened everyone. He, Christ, was in the world, and through the world was made, though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. I think that's fascinating. We've talked about that in many different ways. Here's, here's the Messiah standing on the banks of, of, the, of the Jordan River, John the Baptist is pointing him out. The Lamb of God is here. And he comes to him as I want to be baptized. And you have the Pharisees of all Pharisees. And you got the learned of all learned. Never even recognize the Messiah. And I know we talked about one time. If I was the one of the Pharisees, I'd be like, Okay, the Messiah is supposed to come from this town. I want every male child's name from that town and be going. They, they did try that <clears throat> yeah. during Jesus' ministry. And I think... I think Nicodemus or, or someone had stood up in the Sanhedrin and they said, well, you know, maybe. He, yeah. he had, and they said, well, look it up because he's from he's from Nazareth. Right. Well, he's from Nazareth as far as they know, but he was really born in Bethlehem. Right. right. So they, they did, they did kind of have that, but as you look at the nativity story, you yeah. see, well, there was, there was a little bit of a twist to yeah, that. Yeah, they didn't have the whole picture. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so this is fascinating. He came to that which was his own, that which belonged to him, his world, his creation, his possession. And those who were his own people, the Jewish nation, didn't receive or welcome him. Man, that's, that's fascinating. I know, I know we've talked about in different times where, you know, your puppy dog is waiting at the door just waiting for you to come in and it's wagging its tail is excited to see you whether you've left two seconds or when I left that week they were just as excited when I walk out and walk back in they're just excited to see you but how I mean I wonder how you'd feel if you walked into your dog went yeah <laughs> just like start barking like who are you a yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, see my my one my one dog is very peculiar she'll bark at anything that comes up to the fence to get into the backyard where my aunt and I are or her camper is and where I spend most time. So she'll bark at me all the time. My aunt teases me, your own dogs bark at you. I said, because I don't think they really care who's coming. They're just going to bark. And I'll tease her. I said, what are you barking at me? And then she'll start wagging her tail like, ah, I got you, daddy. And I was like, <laughs> really? And I can see this. You know, you. we don't really know the emotional state of Jesus as he's standing on the, on the bank. Was he like, they just don't get it, do they? And I, I can imagine, imagine, did you ever, do you ever put yourself in Jesus' shoes through some of the events of his life? He's standing on the bank. He's, he's getting ready to pronounce his ministry and say, this, this is the coronation of my ministry. These people don't even get it. There's a handful. But they didn't really get it. <laughs> we know that throughout the story. Uh, they knew something special was going on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they knew they were getting something from the guy, and that might have been the main reason they were following. This could be, this couldn't be. We'll see what happens. John, yeah, John knew. He didn't have the doubts that he had a little bit later yeah. when he was in the prison. Yeah. John knew. Yeah. Most of the other people, yeah, didn't know. Simeon had known. Anna yeah. had known. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anna had her little coterie of, of individuals yep. Yep. because she knew mm -hmm. that there were people that were really looking in earnest for the yeah. Messiah and would care if she told them that. Right. She didn't probably go to the Sanhedrin and tell them that <laughs> because it was like, now she certainly didn't tell Herod that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah thankfully. Right. But, uh, yeah. When you think about that, you've got that moment. You've got, can you imagine his emotions at the Last Supper? He's going through, he's setting some things up for him. He, he's, he's going through what he needs to do for the other 11 and then all of a sudden he goes go do what you got to do it's time for satan to take over totally and do what you got to do i wonder uh, you know i knew this was going to happen but i'm sorry it had to be you i know yeah. what you know i know this what yeah. this is going to mean for you and it's it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's nothing good yeah and then and then imagine he's going through court yeah, well. Fake trials. <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know. They were trying to cancel them. Uh, and you can imagine them just going in there and going, you just don't get it. And, and, and I'm not Jesus, so I don't have the emotional health that he would have. His emotions would be pure in their sense, but I can't imagine him having total compassion for those people that are trying to kill him. And at the same time, looking at him going, you just don't understand, do you? Well, I am the one that's going to... Yeah. I and, mean, if, if, they had, if they had fully known, yeah. you know, but he had compassion yeah. because they, they didn't... They didn't have it. I mean, if you ever... Do you think... Since we can't have pure emotions, we get them as close as possible. <laughs> do you do you think we have compassion, and you guys just don't get it? Whatever that word would be at the same time, I think usually I don't know about me or I don't know about you, but me, I usually grab a hold of one strong emotion and I run with that baby until I get myself in trouble or until it, it, I go. Wait a minute, that's not the way I should act. I don't usually have two counteracting emotions at the same time you know jesus could perfectly love and hate at the same time i can't do that I, you, one is usually struggling the other and i got to come to a, a center somewhere and go oh, lord uh, this is the best i can do in the muddy mucking middle of love and hate but can you imagine here's jesus doing that through the mock trials here's jesus doing that as he's standing in violence you know who do you say i am what do, what do you think and here's Jesus hanging, and every time the soldiers beat him or whipped him or or spit on him or, hey, give us, let's take his clothes, you know. Can you imagine the love and the hate that he had at the moment? Time? And, and Jesus having hate in that situation, he probably didn't. Was it hate or was it disgust or was it pity? Well, he definitely probably had pity. I think the only time that we have a recollection, recollection of Jesus ever hating is when they totally denied what God really was supposed to be trying to do. And the fair, he, was, he was very strong against the religious order. You guys have done ruined what my father tried to set up. Well, I don't know if it was hate or just anger when they wouldn't answer him about either the woman that was bent over the man with the shriveled hand. Right. But, you know, he, it, there's some reference to just looking around at them because they wouldn't, right. wouldn't say anything. Um, you just get the impression he was saying, this is more than enough. Yeah. This is, yeah. you, you done going beyond now. Yeah. And we, I, 